encouraging. Lord, we thank you again for today. We thank you for all your blessings of life and giving to us, God. Yes. We thank you for your hand of safety and protection upon us for every day, Lord. God, I pray for each need to be here this evening, God, that you need.
six books in your Bible, and each time you increase a chapter, uh, you can go back on the book of Genesis, uh, run up 14 books of the Bible, and that'll be First Chronicles. And so there's some scripture here in Isaiah chapter 14 uh, that goes back to uh, First Chronicles, and we'll pick up on that tonight. I just want to read you a few verses tonight. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Uh, or I might, I'm not sure, but I just, uh, there's a few verses in here I think I'll try to pull out tonight, but I kind of want to give you where we're at. And uh, if you go back and uh, for, uh, kind of, I know it's been a few weeks since we've been here in Revival, and uh, 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 last week we was out, and uh, for sickness, and uh, so it's been a few weeks since we've been uh, in the book of uh, Isaiah, then we had a, our, our uh, April, and uh, we had different preachers in on that, so we missed a whole month there. And uh, so uh, bringing it back to where we were at and what's going on in chapter number 13, I believe through chapter number 23, uh, you'll see judgments that take place on different nations and what's taking place in that. And uh, we know that because that we're born again believers and you've been saved by the grace of God, that during the day of the Lord, that day of tribulation, or the, the day that the wrath of the Lord is poured out, that tribulation time begins, uh, uh, you know that uh, that is separated. There's seven years tribulation. Is, uh, if you said this way, there's three and a half years of good, then there's three and a half years of the bad. And uh, what that means is after that first three and a half years, and there's no opportunity to turn back to God. All, all uh, if I said this way, all grace has been removed uh, uh, simply because of the extension that God uh, has given. Now, uh, if you read your Bible correctly tonight, my studies are correctly, this doesn't mean I'm anything. I'm so about what our Bible says. Uh, uh, those that have heard the truth and rejected it uh, will not be able to be saved in those days. The tribulation you've already uh, rejected and turned God away. Uh, matter of fact, uh, more than likely, according to Scripture, the only ones going to be able to be saved are those Jews uh, that have not heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Simply because uh, uh, that was the chosen people. There's generations that's been born, generations that has been born after that, and the rejection of the Messiah in Israel that have never heard uh, the gospel of the truth of the Word of God. Uh, more than likely in America, anywhere in America today, if you've never heard the gospel, it's my choice. Amen. If you've never stepped inside of a church, it's my choice. Yes, and, uh, so that, that just ought to tell you and I how important you and I are living for the Lord and sharing the gospel and being a Christian example. How important that ought to be. We may, I mean, honestly, you've probably heard it all your life, but you may be the only Bible that somebody ever read. You may be the only light that they ever see. I'll tell you a sad story tonight, but uh, there's they some good stuff on this. And uh, I pray that you'd help me pray. The boy's name is Caleb, and we met him in a, a service in the revival meeting last week. And, uh, under a heavy conviction. Matter of fact, I wouldn't change my shirt after I got done preaching. And I come back out and the preacher was closing out and he got up and walked out. Started to go by me and I was standing on the right hand side and he was, he was looking at the wall. I had a homeless pair of sunglasses in one hand, I believe it was, and a hat the other. And he just kind of looked at the wall. And I mean, from about right here, all the way down to his collar, his wet with sweat. And uh, I said, sir, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. And he kind of <coughs> looked over his shoulder and said, thank you. And he went out and he sat down over beside the fellowship hall on the steps. And make a long story short, after church, I told the preacher, I said, man, there's one young fellow in the very back, raised his hand, but there's another guy. Uh, man, he was wet with sweat. He gripped in the pew under heavy conviction and uh, walked out. And uh, the preacher went out. And when the preacher went out the door, he got up, went to the car. And I mean, he was sitting there just rocking back and forth in the car. And, uh, probably in his mid-30s, and his mother come over, uh, she was riding, or they was riding together, come over and told the preacher, said, he just rocking back and forth, you mind go talk to the preacher, said, no, I'll go talk to him, I went over there, and here's what he said, he said, I'm waiting uh, uh, for some of this evil, the, 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 the light of this evil to go out, uh, so that uh, I could get saved, I really would like for the Lord to come into my heart, and to save me, there's just some things I'm waiting on, and me and the preacher tried to talk to him and say, look, Jesus didn't die for those sitting on the church pew. Uh, hey, listen, I mean, he died from the good and most, for the good and most and the other most. And I mean, while we were yet sinners, Christ might die. But 
Here's what I want you to understand. I try to tell you. Hey, when I say that, I'm not calling that Christian folk. That's not who Jesus died for. He died for the lost. Hey, they might have got saved. They might have been brought up on the church pew, but they were lost. Hey, I said, under all these garments, under all this suit, this tie, there's a heart and a soul that needs the Lord. Hey, and the all, I, you may be in places I've never been in. Boy, that preacher gave a great testimony of, man, I've done everything, been everywhere. I, hey, but I'm telling you, there's a night that the Lord convicted my heart. And he said, I'm telling you all this night because it's important. I, and I want you to understand, here's what he said. I, he said, I'm just waiting for a little bit of that darkness to go out uh, so that I could, uh, I could get saved. And, and uh, he said, I mean, you look on the news and he said, somebody goes in and shoots up 19 young people. He said, preacher, look at me. He said, preacher, can you imagine uh, uh, the envy and the, and the anger that would be inside of you uh, if that happened in a place where your children was going to school? And I said, sir, I'd be a fool to try to stand here and tell you what I'd do under that situation. But here's all I'm going to tell you is if I ever have to face a situation like that, I can tell you I'll never have to face it alone. Yeah. And I don't have to face tomorrow alone. Yeah. I said, sir, when I go tonight, lay my head on my pillow. I'm glad my sins are gone. If I never see them more, I'll see heaven. I'm going to say it's important that you say that and you live like you're saying. Somebody's watching. Yes, sir. Right. You realize that there's people like that. Here's what he said. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not making this up. Here's what he said. He said, there's preachers I know live worse than I do. I just wonder how many on the church view is somebody else watching and they're headed to hell because of the life we live. Right. Here's, what, here's what the Lord did. He said, I'm just waiting <laughs> for some of that evil to dissipate. And I get saved. I said, sir, whether you want to admit it or not, watch this. I said, and this is the Lord. I said, whether you want to admit it or not, right now you're living for the atmosphere. You realize that? He said, yes, sir. I said, you realize that you get saved, a little bit of that light's going to go out. And a little bit of light's going to start shining for the Lord. Man, he started wiping tears under his eyes. Hey, listen, he didn't get saved, but here's what he did to he, he said, we could pray with him. I got to praying. The Lord came in there around that car, and I was praying. And I said, Lord, I sure would not did. He said, I had a friend, 25 years old. He said, he didn't believe in God. He said, you know, he died in the car wreck. He said, he went to hell. And he said, I don't want to go there. And I said, sir, you don't have to go there. And I got done praying. I said, Lord, please don't let him die and go to hell. Hey, listen, I don't know if that boy's got saved here. My preacher had called me and told me he had. But there's one thing I know for sure. I walked back to my vehicle to get in with my family. Guess what that boy did? He got out of the driver's seat and went got in another place in the car and let his mama drive the car home. You know what happened? He fell under conviction. And he was scared to leave out of there. Lost and done. Hey, listen, I'm glad that the prayers of God's people can still say it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've been involved in. I'm glad to tell you that you've never been wrong enough that he can't save you. But you've never been good enough that you don't need to be saved. Amen. That has nothing to do with Isaiah. <laughs> There's just one thing I don't understand. I, and I, almost, I do understand this fact. That I'm flesh. I understand I'm human. If you knew things that went through my mind uh, during the day, you wouldn't quit. You wouldn't quit praying for me, okay? I don't understand tonight why a man was 22, 23 years ago when I stood in the altar and committed myself to this little lady right over here. Then we, I mean, just during the week, uh, able to spend time together, pray together, read God's Word together, read Sundays together, and see what God is doing. Uh, I don't understand why a man uh, uh, would want to slip out on that and go, no, I don't understand that. I don't understand why mothers don't want to be mamas. I don't understand that. I don't understand why wives don't want to be faithful. I really don't understand that. But I do know this, that I'm flesh. Uh, but watch this tonight. Uh, Yes, I could do the same thing. Yes, you could do the same thing. You may be involved 
preacher told me the other day that a woman married her cat in another state. You ain't going to believe this, but probably 10 years ago, John Dorsey told me outside the church, he's running revival here probably about 10 years ago. It was back before the youth revival. I mean, yeah, the youth camp broke out. He said, preacher, I'm going to tell you something. He said, a man slipped around with seven, eight ladies and not find satisfaction. A young person would go out and say they're gay, be a homosexual. He said a man would slip out and cheat on his wife and run around with somebody else's wife, run around with his friend's wife, and lady run around with her friend's husband, run around in the workplace. He said, you wait and see, preacher, what I'm telling you. He said, the next thing you know, they'll be laying there with their own animals and their own bees. And you said, preacher, that's crazy. And that's unheard of. We passed crazy and unheard of a long time ago.
96 cars that belonged to my daddy. I borrowed it. I mean, every, I mean, everything was going downhill. I was trying to pastor here, and, and uh, I was headed on, we turned on Murray Road. And, uh, man, I was having one of them pity parties, tears running down my, I ain't say a word, tears running down my cheek. I, I've been praying and seeking God's face, and I told the Lord that anything in my life, Lord, if I, I'll get rid of it, I'll sell it, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I just want your power, I want your presence, I, I want the anointing power of God. And, and uh, I'll never forget this, I said, listen, that's when you and the Lord, don't you get me involved, don't you? that's when you and the Lord, you pray the hard thing. I hope you know what you're talking about. I, I said, honey, I'm just being honest with you. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not looking for death. I'm not looking for God to have to kill nobody. I've got both ears listening. Lord, all you got to do is tell me. All you got to do is speak to me. It's coming across the road right there. I was having one of them pity parties. And I hope I never forget this. I hope if they had to put me in a middle institution or rest hall, I, I hope I remember what I'm about to tell you right now. My wife reached over and she, she just put her hand in mine. And she said, right on to Look in that room in here. Uh, and, and, and Jerry was just, uh, well, Faith was two years old. She was in a car seat. So I guess Jerry was five, six years old, seven years old. Uh, and uh, Jerry was back there talking to Faith, playing with her on the way to church. Uh, she said, Don't you look in that room in here? Uh, uh, she said, They have no idea what you're going through. They have no idea what you're bring facing. Uh, I said, But I want you to look, listen to them voices. Uh, I want you to hear how happy them babies are. She said, They're trusting you. Uh, and they're believing in you. And that's all God's asking you to do. Hey, I hope you'll look up here tonight. I have no idea what you'll need tomorrow. I have no idea what you'll need before the sun goes down tonight. Oh, but I know who does. And all he wants tonight is for you and I to put our faith and our trust in him. Amen. Amen. I think here's the deal. I'm just, I'm really just trying to take this as I get it from here. Bless him, Lord. Come on. Bless him. I don't have no cheat sheet. I'm just, I mean, I've got Isaiah 14. I've got my notes all rolled out there. I'm ready to preach this. And God won't let me move them. Bless him, Lord. I think here's the, here, here's the problem. Matter of fact, a man, well, it was one group that I said you were the other day, but I had another man tell me the same thing. A deacon, you know, been across the hole in his church. Bruce came out of Pentecost. Bruce said, when I was growing up, he said, Baptist was the last thing you wanted to be. Because Baptist believed that you could get saved, you had a free ticket to heaven, you live any way you wanted to. Now, I understand that for the word of God, we have eternal security. Now, I believe that 100%. I'm going to preach that till I die. I've got Bible to prove it. Right. The Pentecostal believe this, they believe you can lose your salvation. Well, the one thing that I find good about that. If you think you can lose it, it ought to make you walk closer to Calvary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you've got eternal security and you know you can't never lose it, boy, you shouldn't you be grateful for it? Yeah. 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 Shouldn't we live our life in a way that somebody else would say, boy, I'd really like to have that. Yeah. There's one thing I'll probably never understand. I tell everybody this all the time. You don't believe how many phone calls I get and somebody say this. Hey, listen, I'm looking for a car. In about three more months, the one I'm driving will be paid for. It ain't got about 80,000 miles on it, but I'm wanting to trade it in. I said, what's wrong with it? They'll say nothing. I said, well, listen, I'm not your pastor, but if I was you, I'd drive it if it's paid for. Right. Because right. there ain't nothing. If you make it the next three months, however long that thing lasts until it dies, there ain't no happier day than that. <laughs> the next go. Hey, I just want to say that if we've ever been forgiven and cleansed, sanctified, justified, washed in the blood of Lamb, why in the world would we want to bring that stuff back in? Amen. Amen. We've been set free. Yes, I mean, we've been set free tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, that's free. That won't cost you anything tonight. <laughs> oh, it'll be a joy for the people. Amen. Amen. Yes.
I'm just breathing at trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Is everybody okay? Everybody's praying tonight. I'm just trying to be obedient. I want you to look with me in Romans chapter number two. I'm going to read you a couple of verses. I'll preach to you a thought tonight. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting the right papers out of heaven tonight. Amen. Romans chapter two, verse number two, like I said, but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges him which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Look at verse number four. Or despisest thou the riches of his good? Well, I just want to ask you tonight, has God ever been good to you? What's what your Bible said? Or despisest thou the riches of his good? I just want to say tonight, listen, and, and I hope you hear what I say, and this is what I'm saying tonight. I'm not talking about God being as good to you as he is to me. I'm talking about God being as good to you as he's good to you. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not talking about God being as good to me as he's been good to you. I'm talking about if God's good to me, that's far more than I ever deserve. Yeah. I hope you're hearing me tonight. We ought to be real happy and real undeserving, realize how undeserving we are. Not that God's not as good to me as he is to you. That God would even be good to me. And matter of fact, and I need to say this, he is no respect a person. If you think God's been good to me, honey, God's been good to you. If I think God's been good to you, honey, God's been good to me. If you've ever been lost, and now you're saved, honey, God's been good to you.
I'm not saying they ain't scriptures for sin. We don't shout, thank God they are. Yeah. We never got saved that many scriptures for sin. Right. 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 I just baptized the carpet in the pulpit. I sprinkled it anyway. <laughs> 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 I beseech you therefore, bread. That word beseech means to beg, to plead. I beseech you therefore, bread, and by the mercies of God. Mercy is God given to us, or God withholding from us what we deserve. I beseech you therefore, bread, and by the mercies of God. By God, by, by the withholding of the judgment you deserve from God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know what the Bible said tonight? That they, I've got to crucify this way, a living sacrifice. You know, most sacrifices are dead. But when I say living, Sacrifice. Here's where we ought to get real happy and shout about it right here tonight. We are a living sacrifice. How can that be, preacher? Because the thing that got sacrificed was the old man. Right. What's living is the new man. Right. 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 It is just simply, the Bible said, it's our reasonable service. See, I ain't sitting here asking you to do anything God ain't already said. Right. It's your reasonable right. service. Been married 23 years. Guess what? When I get up in the morning, it is my reasonable service. Service to provide for my family. When our clothes get dirty, guess what? My wife took it upon herself as a reasonable service to make sure our house is clean and her family has clean clothes to wear and a fresh meal to eat for on the road. Guess what? I made sure that I provided for my family that I could stop somewhere and get them something to eat. And anybody listening to that, hey, I'm not getting a gold award for that. That's my reasonable. Sir, now I've been real good to Miss Hayden. Miss Hayden's been real good to me. Don't listen to that. Yeah. I'm glad I can stand in his mouth and say this ain't boastful. I believe my youngest stood up tonight and say my dad has been real good to me. No, not because I love my youngest. I believe your youngest can stand up tonight and say my mom and dad has been real good to me. Matter of fact, I believe that your mom and dad can stand up tonight and say our youngest have been real good. You know why? Because something moved down inside their soul. And an old man moved down. And the Holy Ghost moved in. And they knew they had a reasonable service for them. Amen. 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 That's, that's way too hard to preach. I just say, ready for all that. That's your reasonable service. Right. Just to live for them. That's what the Bible says. And be not conformed to this world. But preach, you don't understand. I don't fit in. Preacher, you don't understand. I'm the only one on the ball team that say, whoop. Amen. I'm not saying we're going to take that out. I'll pray for you. I'll encourage you. I'll help you. But I'm not living down that road. You want to shout the victory. You don't fit in. Hey, preacher, you don't understand. I, if I quit drinking, if I quit going, if I quit running around, I'm going to be the only one in my place of work. Hey, listen, the two things need to happen. Stand up in what God said you want to be or get out. Right. It ain't that easy. For, was you looking for a job when you found out? Right. Yes, sir. If you were, you want to thank God you got one. You weren't even looking for one God gave to you. I believe you take a stand for it. He'd give you another. I tell you what the psalmist said. Boy, it's Psalm 25, 37. David, the psalmist David said this. I've been young now long. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Hey, I have no idea what tomorrow holds. But I know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds me. I have no word about it. Hey, Bruce, I wish I could say that. You can. Yeah. You can. I ain't nobody special man. Come on, Just enjoy the goodness of yeah. God. Right. That was what he said. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. I mean, how many of you living in America today look around and you think people have absolutely lost their minds? That's right. right. You don't like because ain't nobody renewing them. Right. I'll just be honest with you. Before I came to this service, I, I had to get somewhere and pray, and that's God. 
for review my life. Matter of fact, we was talking on the way to church tonight. And before I ever pulled in the parking lot, I had to ask y'all to renew my mind. Boy, well, I'm glad I did it. Because I've been in Isaiah chapter 14 tonight. And yeah, I'm going to talk to the Lord. Oh, I ain't got time to preach that right there. But be a transformed. I love this. Uh, I, sure, I probably can find one in the congregation tonight. One of you uh, men, I mean, one of you boys have probably got one in your pocket. A transformer. It looks like a car. But in about 30 seconds, it looks like a robot. It don't look like a different kind of car. It looks like something totally different. Somebody would have went, whoop, right there. <laughs> or aren't you glad? I mean, brother, for you may stand in the mirror and look just like the same boy, Lord, that did whenever you got born again. But thank God on the inside, there's been a transformation yeah, that is yeah, taking yeah. place. What I'm trying to say is it is totally different yeah. on the inside. Amen. I said, thank God. On the inside, it's different now. Notice this, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to say this, and I'm moving right along. I'm, I'm trying to get to the end. I, the only problem is I don't have a road there on the way to the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't get holding against me tonight. The Lord's holding me hostage right now. You know? <laughs> acceptable. Perfect, look up in this age of this subject. Boy, I thank God for grace. Yeah. I thank God for mercy. Yeah. But you can't argue with this right here. It's a plan A for your life. And that's God. Yeah. Yeah. But boy, aren't you glad God, whenever we mess up, aren't you glad God don't throw it away? Amen. But you may end up in plan B. Or plan C. You can finish the race in plan C. There'll come a day when all will be revealed. We'll see what God had in plan A. Notice what you ask. The acceptable and perfect will of God. How are you going to find that? When you surrender yourself, just like you surrendered your soul. Amen. You ask God to save you, and He did. It. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. We're holding on to say. Well, I know this is what God's word says. I know this is what my church believes. I know this is what I said I believe. But this is the situation I'm in. This is what I'm dealing with. And this is what I'm going to do about it. That's not the perfect will of God. No, right. That's your plans. Right. That's your desires. I'll tell you a good example. Terry said, Daddy, if I do this right here with, with my life, if I do this right here in my school, how do you feel about it? I said, how's God feel about it? What's God telling you? I'm, don't you follow God this? And I hope, I, I hope this don't sound bad when I say this. It doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a certified nurse. It doesn't matter if it's a registered nurse. Hey, listen, it doesn't matter if it's a foot washer. It doesn't matter if it's a doorkeeper. It doesn't matter if it's a cleaner. If it's a will of God, I'm tickled to death. Yeah. I went to college to be an electrician. Use car wholesale. But I can tell you this. Somehow, some way, God let me find the plan. Yeah. Yeah. That brother Bruce was outside of my was outside of my desire. Man, I done talk to my mom about it. I done talk to my dad. Be honest with you, I'll tell you how honest I was. I done talk to my preacher about it. I said, preacher, if I if I get a big enough crew together, I'd see them out. I'd still go run, for, run revivals. I'd pastor church. I'd still do all those things. My preacher is here. I went off to school to do that. I think the only reason I ended up where I did to go to school was like we miss up. I believe that, my mom. When I, when I left that school with a diploma, I could have run, I dropped a cable all over that place. And, I'd set them up, they come told us that uh, what they'd hire if you go and you try to travel out of, out of the state to go run this five up to get us. Man, I don't want to do that. I'm going to be gone. Hey, listen, I'm going to love this girl. I, I've got a local church over here that I love. I, you pastor there, man, I can't do that. That's going to mess up what God has for my life. I finally got somewhere to pray and I said, God, I really don't know what you've got in plan for me. And Lord, but listen, I don't want to lose that little girl you give me. And Lord, I sure don't want to miss the mark. Hey, listen, I, I hope you're here tonight. I didn't see myself marry her until the day that I saw her. God showed her to me. Hey, listen, but I was still hoping I was still in her league. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Of course you do. You look at her with me, you know what I'm saying? Brother Floyd, I want to make sure I 
I can marry that girl. I'm going to let you have to do what God had me to do. I never saw myself 23 years later married to the same woman, two, two precious children. I never saw myself in the same church for 22 years back. Anybody listen to me tonight? Yeah. Brian Carwell didn't fix that. Vicki Carwell, Larry Carwell didn't fix that. I'm glad there's a day in my life that I got born again to save by the grace of God. There's another day in my life I surrender to the call of prayer. Yeah. But thank God there's a real happy day in my life some five years later when I said, Lord, whatever you want, I, I'm willing. I, hey, listen, it is some just 12 years ago. Oh, Lord, we renewed that. Oh, God, if there's anything standing in the way, and listen, I'm just telling you, there has to be renewing of the mind, and we need to find ourselves in the perfect Amen. will. Amen. Amen. Notice this. I give you three things. This is going to come to the house to help slow me down tonight. Romans 13, verse 11, most of the Bible says. And that knowing the time, that now is our time to wake up asleep. For now is our salvation near. Then when we believe, I just want to ask you, how many of you believe what the Bible says right there? Amen. Amen. Do you believe you're closer yeah. to heaven right now than you've ever been? Amen. Do you believe we're closer to the end than we've ever been? Amen. Well, if you and I are closer to heaven than we've ever been, would that not mean the sinners are closer to heaven yeah. than they've ever been? Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Notice what your Bible said. And that knowing the time that is high time. To wake out of sleep, number one, I want to say this, it's time for the church to be awake. Yep. It's yep. time for us to be awake. I'm not talking about this heavy on the service on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and trying to make it through without going to sleep. I'm talking about at the gas pump, be awake. I'm talking about at the school house. I'm talking about on your job. I'm talking about in the restaurant, in the mall, wherever you're at. Be awake. It's time to be awake. Look around us tonight. If we're closer to heaven than we've ever been, our friends and our family that is lost is closer to hell. Amen. She's playing on the piano tonight. Number one, we need to be away. Number two, look at verse number 13. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in lightning, and drunkenness, not in chamber, not in longness, not in strife, and envy. And this song said, I want to be awake, but the church needs to be aware. Where are you walking tonight? Where are you standing? Where are you living? We need to be aware. Whether you want to admit it or not, right or wrong, your children are watching where you live. Right, right, yeah. I just want to ask you, how proud of a mom or daddy will you be? Your children lined up in their relationship with the Lord, right where you are right now. We need to be aware. How many people will find Jesus if they follow you? We need to be aware. We need to be aware. I didn't ask you how many people would find the church if they follow you tonight. I said, how many people will find Jesus if they follow you tonight? And last but not least, we need to be aware. We need to be aware of how that is. Verse number 14, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I told you this. A man is going to live his own lust and time. Make no provision to fulfill the desires, the lust of the flesh. I want to say that we need to be awake. We need to be aware. I feel we need to be a witness. Boy, they ought to see Jesus Christ in our life. Notice what the Bible said. It said, put him on. Put him on. That means this tonight. They may, say, they may look at me and say, wait a minute. That can't be him. Brian Carpenter can't be that happy. He can't be that excited. He can't know that much about the Word of God. I hope that's what they're saying. But I hope that they say, yes, Brother G. That must be the Lord. It must be God. Hey, listen. I know what they used to be. I know where they used to live. I know what they used to do. It must be the Lord.